character of Titus is, he's a young, aggressive, excited um, young man. He wants to be right in every situation. He wants to be the hero. When I prepared for that, uh, I just drew from my own life, I think, especially because I can totally relate to the way he reacts to things. I tend to react and then go, oh yeah, this is probably what I should do in the situation. So that's kind of how he takes life and, and, and takes his, his life in this game. Well, Titus and Yuna, I think when they first start off, they're at two completely separate ends of the world. And they find out, I think, throughout the story that they have a lot more in common than they think. And she tends to be very calm and cool. And Titus is much more aggressive, much more excited. He's ready to go. And she's more of a thinker. But she teaches him so much. And it's really a love story, I think, between the two of them. That's what the essential storyline is, is his love for her and him discovering that love and, and vice versa. I think that Titus is driven by her being so calm and collected. Uh, it makes him more aggressive and he seeks the truth even more and he seeks to pull that excitement out of her. He wants to see her as, as excited about things and as energized as he is. And so I really tried to give some some loving pushes to the, the character when they're in relationship with each other to say, come on, let's go. Hey, you know, it's exciting. And, and she's like, okay, I'll get excited, but in my time. So There's like 9,000 lines um, of dialogue, which is really amazing. There is a lot of dialogue, which is really different from any other game that, uh, that I've ever experienced. Um, and on an average, there might be like, say, for a regular animation thing, 300 lines, I guess, total 9,000 lines, uh, so many different paths to turn in the game and so many different ways to go. Uh, there's, there's so much there. Well, there's some, there's some great memorable moments in this game from, for me personally. There's a scene where uh, Yuna teaches Titus to laugh because he's so serious and he's so, you know, he's so set on his mission and he gets so caught up in his emotions and, uh, when he's laughing, it's it was it was it was fun to do, and it's it was fun to watch because we actually did that to picture, where I got to watch Titus the character doing this and, and me adding to it, and so that was a lot of fun and very memorable. There's also some real emotional moments that are very memorable in it, um, where Titus finds out uh, some information about Yuna that is uh, shocking to him, and he has to deal with it because he has no other choice but to deal with it um, and if he wants to be a hero he's got to take on these responsibilities and these emotions and they're new emotions for him but uh, he handles them well and it's a it's a breathtaking scene as well the animation in this literally when I first saw it uh, we, we had to spend some time where we had to stop for a while where I was going this is amazing animation I kept just saying over and over I can't believe this animation I would say to the people that are playing this game and have played all of the other Final Fantasy games that this is, in my opinion, the most exciting, the most uh, visually stunning, and to take the time to go through and get every aspect of the game. Now, it could take hours and hours, but it's going to be a lot of fun, and uh, it's a learning experience, it's a, it's a growth, and you know, not to sound corny, but you'll learn, and you can become possibly a better person because he, this character, Titus, he learns and he becomes a better person through it. And if you can really get involved in the story and get wrapped up in it like most of us do, I get involved in stories, you should, uh, you should grow from it as well. Basically, she is a summoner in a mythical land called Spira and is being aided by uh, some friends on a mission to defeat Sin. This journey that she's on is one that her father did before him and I get the sense of sort of a generational obligation almost, as well as an honor. And it gives her this sense of duty and that motivates her through most of the story, a duty, respect, honor, these are the things that are important to her. Uh, these are the things that I try to translate in a way to the voice of Yuna as well. 
but at the same time retaining the gentleness and femininity that is so apparent in the way that she looks. So it was an interesting little dichotomy I had to come to, um, finding a way to balance those two aspects out. She's this gentle yet forceful presence. I wouldn't say docile because I don't get the sense that she backseats anything. She's very direct, very forthcoming with her opinions and her ways, but she doesn't have to be aggressive about it, you know, abrasive. She does it in a way that uh, leads others. She brings them to herself and to her journey, you know, and that's evident with the friends that she has. Um, her companions, which actually more so than lieutenants and sergeants and things, they're her friends. And that's how it is. It's a very familial kind of energy that she exudes. Titus's character provides her with uh, a whole new dimension that we haven't seen to you before, which of course is the romantic dimension. And it fleshes her out, I think, than that extra part of her that we haven't seen. That's a little more humanizing, too, because up to this point, we've only seen her duty bound, her goal, you know, to free the land from sin. I mean, we see her with her friends being, a, you know, a little more human and a little more personable, but Titus really provides that womanly aspect to her, you know, the romantic element that fleshes her out completely. I think you have to go into it with an actor head because these mics and this this whole system is so sensitive that every nuance to your voice is going to be heard and you can't make your voice sound like you're thinking you have to think and then your voice will just do it it's a lot more organic I think than we would initially assume and it's even something that I've discovered as I go about doing this so I try to relate myself to the character that I'm portraying in this case you know I relate myself as best I can to Yuna I haven't saved the world lately, so <laughs> that dimension of her escapes me a tiny bit. But what elements that are there that are very specific and human and at the same time general and identifiable, I try to tap into those elements, think it through from that perspective, and then my voice reflects what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling, without even trying. So when you force it, it's obvious. When you just do it, it's going to be a lot more enjoyable for you and for the listener. If I had one thing I'd like the gamers to take away in this, this movie's experience, would m probably be that, an experience. I want them to get lost in the story. I want them to get lost in these characters. I want them to forget they're playing a game. I want them to participate like they're right there having it happen and I hope that through our voices, through this animation, through this storytelling, we're able to just transport them into a completely different world. Right there in Spira. <laughs>